Oh god. Sorry. Is my hair okay? In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Is that our growing audience? And that is our growing, forever growing audience. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, everyone. You have tuned in to Dr. Judy WTF, which normally stands for What the Freud. But today we are turning our tables to What the Film. We're going to be shrinking a movie. I'm your host, Walt Lusk, and in the studio, as usual, is Dr. Judy Rosenberg, who is an internationally authored. He's written a couple of books, actually. The most famous one right now is Be the Cause, Healing Human Disconnect. It is a great book and was even a better stock, stocking stuffer, but you can still buy it for Valentine's. And um, uh, we are on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and uh, I'll, I'll here at ubnradionetwork.com. And, and also I wanted to say, Walt, um, the app... The, the Psychological Healing Center app is almost done. It's on, Yeah, for Apple. For, for Apple. Yeah. And if any yeah. one of you want a download of the app, it has a beautiful picture of the mind map on there. And if you would like to have that app delivered to you or at least available to you, please go to the website, drjudywtf.com, and give us your uh, email and write us a note, and as soon as this thing is ready for upload, uh, we'll get it over to you. It's going to be an amazing resource, because if you can hear our voice, you can actually have therapy from the Psychological Healing Center, which has offices in Sherman Oaks and Beverly Hills, on Skype, and of course on the phone. And we've had some international clients, and of course folks all over the uh, United States. And... Uh, I just want you to know that being on the phone and doing the 10 session mind map journey or being on Skype does not interfere with the therapy at all. I've had very much success uh, using those modalities. And uh, of course I was concerned about that initially. Uh, and I find that it absolutely um, still delivers the system in a very effective way. You were a fantastic guest today on the Ann Walker show. Thank you. On the that radio. That was fun. I like that. You know, that. she was a guest yeah. on, you know, Colin guest on the Ann Walker <clears throat> Show, another show here on UBN. So check that out. Spotlight, for those of you who don't know, is an Academy Award nominated movie that's been out for best movie, best writing, uh, screenplay, and a couple of actors that are in it. The cast is phenomenal. Yes, it is. And looking at the budget that they made for this movie, I can tell you that a lot of them did it as a labor of love, mm -hmm. given the topic that it uh, covers. Mm -hmm. Spotlight is a group of very specific news reporters in the Boston Globe that spends a lot of time digging into a topic or an issue before they write their article or articles. And in this instance, um, it's, of course, a true story. Um, the Boston Globe was acquired by a new uh, uh, general manager owner, and he encouraged them to look into the Catholic Church and the child molestation issue. And it's kind of in the th genre and the theme of all the president's men, and it's laid out very well. It's done amazingly. Mm -hmm. It's very tactful. Yes, and uh, the actors that were involved in it, uh, Michael Keaton was the primary one, and um, uh, they, they got very passionate about their role and, of course, about the movie. Um, this, they started investigating in 2001, and by the end of 2002, the Boston Globe Spotlight team published nearly 600 stories of the Catholic Church, and 200 priests and brothers in the Boston Archdiocese had been publicly accused of sexual abuse. The Archdiocese teetered on the edge of bankruptcy, and in December of that year, 2002, Bernard Car uh, Cardinal Law, Cardinal Law, who had been in charge for quite a while, the Boston's Archbishop resigned, 
although he was relegated to a very, very prominent church in Rome where he stayed till he was retiring, retired at age 75. What's more, the filmmakers note major abuse scandals had been discovered in more than 100 other American towns and another 100 places worldwide. In other words, uh, Spotlight took on this institution that had power, money, and resources and showed people that nobody is untouchable. Um, the, the byline of this kind of sort of was break the story, break the silence. And as you can imagine, for any number of reasons we're going to touch on, there was a lot of silence as it relates to this topic and this issue right. for decades. And mm -hmm. the Boston Globe was the one that literally broke the dam, the spotlight team. And as a result, um, from 1950, just give you a, a little bottom line, we're going to go some numbers. The, the church, Catholic Church, between 1950 and not too long ago, has literally spent over $4 billion, that's with a B, on, <coughs> excuse me, on awards with um, these abuse issues. So it's huge Wait, and vast. Four, $40 billion on awards. $4 billion. Pay, four, $4 billion. $4 billion <coughs> on payouts to yes, the victims. to the victims, yes. Uh, for, of of pred predators. Predators. Right. The movie doesn't really glorify the reporters who covered the story, but whether it just pays homage to their hard work and their perseverance. It also reveals the amazement at the depth of the abuse that has been done in their city and their bewilderment as how far the church would go to keep these priests protected. And that has happened and occurred every single city, major city mm -hmm. in the country. Um, the cardinal out here at the time was Mahoney, Roger Mahoney. I've never been a fan of him. I'm not a Catholic, but I've never been a fan of him. And he did even worse. He had them all write down their sins and whatnot and told them he wouldn't do anything with them and then stuck it in a filing cabinet. And after he left, guess what? An attorney found the filing cabinet. Um, and he played musical priests and, and bounced these guys all over the state to protect them. So this is one of the biggest cover-ups in oh, it's gigantic. You know, recent American history. And ultimately, this, uh, this movie is about denial and cause. And, you know, if you've listened to our shows, you know that I go back to cause. And cause is always beginning with mother-infant disconnect. But let's not start there right now. Let's go to this big cover-up, predators, and what... Um, why they become predators, and how institutions can basically be umbrellas for both the darkness and the light. Uh, we have institutions that bring a lot of hope to people, a lot of spirituality to people, a lot of comfort to people, uh, but sometimes the very institutions that we trust, as we do our parents and our families of origin, um, uh, do big damage to us. So. As we all know, the Catholic Church re represents morality, ethics, family, and is a place of holiness and comfort. And so it's, it's very sad when we see an institution that advertises themselves as, as such, and in many cases is such. And, and, and we have to understand that this doesn't mean that every Catholic priest is a predator, okay, or that every no, institution no. only is an umbrella uh, for people who want to take advantage. But unfortunately, people do go into these institutions, people who are not well go into these institutions so that they can do their thing. And that is, uh, is, is hugely damaging and oftentimes spoils the entire the entire message of the institution. One message that came through in the movie early on was the fact that a lot of these these children that were abused were, of course, from poor families. And the line was a sort of, when, the, when a priest pays attention to you, you feel special. Mm -hmm. And it's a priest, it's the church. And the byline sort of is, the subtext is, how do you say no to God? Right, so and priest so is God's representative. Just, I on mean, Earth. the carnage from these um, these these victims is just incredible. Mm -hmm. It was it was mostly men, but there were some women. Mm -hmm. um, and in one scene early on, uh, they wanted to speak to a victim, and the attorney was going, "This is one of the lucky ones." And for me, Judy, I, I realized at that point I knew exactly what he meant, and he implied it. He goes, 
a lot of them committed suicide. That's right. Because they just couldn't handle it. Right. They were the ones that were the victim, mm -hmm. but they felt dirty. They felt bad. Absolutely. They felt, yeah, they felt like they were being attacked, mm -hmm. which they were by the church. Right. Um, and it should have been the other way. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to cause for a moment. And uh, we all... Uh, know what it takes to form a healthy human psyche and if you don't know let me tell you it's based on attachment theory and in order to be a healthy normal human being uh, we need eye contact skin contact we need to be breastfed we need stay-at-home mothering attuned mothering we need a father that nurtures mother uh, we need relative financial stability um, community safety okay so that is in an ideal world. I don't know very many people who have these ideal uh, family uh, elements. However, you alluded to the fact that these predators preyed on the poor. They paid, preyed on families that were disintegrated. Uh, they paid, preyed on families that were, um, fa ha were fatherless. Correct. Well, these families, a lot of them, we trusted the church, right? right? I mean, the fathers, the priests are, are are going out with these children and going and buying them ice cream and paying sure. attention to them. And, sure. oh, isn't it wonderful that, you know, they're getting involved in the church? Absolutely. All the while, they're silently uh, preying on these poor children. And, by so, the way, I wanted to say, this really is a call-in show, too. Please do. <laughs> and if you have an issue yeah. or a challenge, mm -hmm. been abused, or nobody know somebody who's been abused, yeah. whether it be from the Catholic Church or other institutions like mm -hmm. uh, the Boy Scouts of America and others. Or teachers. Or teachers and right. schools. Yeah. Um, you can call us. And the number is 323-843-2826. That's 323-843-2826. So I had the pleasure of seeing the movie with Walt, and it was really fun because, of course, we got to discuss it, and it was very juicy to analyze it and shrink this movie. And this is one of my favorite movies, I think, to shrink because it's so so in-depth, and it speaks to the hole in the soul, and it also speaks to the disintegration of the family, which is what causes us to go sideways, what causes us to weaken our boundaries, and then seek shelter in uh, institutions, hopefully institutions that protect us and give us morals and ethics and so on. But when we run from the, um, how do you call it, from the the, the the pot to the frying pan is that out of the, it? no out of the yeah out of the out of the frying pan into the fire okay thanks out of the frying pan and into the fire so I'm gonna start connecting the dots and making some parallels here so when the family breaks down when mommy is not able to care for her infants and when uh, dad abandons the family for example or vice versa uh, when there are challenges financially uh, when there are uh, extreme cases of drug use and abuse alcoholism and so on and there isn't a protective layer that surrounds the, ch the children then obviously people are going to turn to something and in terms of institutions, they may turn to gangs, or if they're lucky, they may turn to institutions that actually protect. And in some cases, they do turn to these institutions, hoping that they will protect and end up in the hands of predators. And so this is truly a sad case because I speak a lot about this, Walt, but parents set the bar, okay? Parents set the bar. So if parents create a paranoid, unsafe world, then unfortunately, the child's boundaries will be way down. Yes. And if parents also abuse and sexually violate or physically violate or neglect or, or in some way wound their children, then the pump is... Is, is primed. Well, the, the, yeah, the, the, the pumps and primed, right? right. And, it, and, and they're, they're they're just sitting ducks in some cases. They're just sitting ducks. They can't yell. They can't scream. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't think of talking back. And no. then they don't have a trusted family member that they can go to and say, "Hey, mom and dad, guess what ha happened today at church?" And that's part of it. So this is a huge denial system. So it's 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 vast. In fact, one story I read, um, there were two boys that were being abused, mm -hmm. and they you know, were told to be hush-hush about it, and they were talking to each other because they both knew they were involved in this sure. in the garage. And yeah. Dad happened to be, I think it was two brothers, Dad happened to walk, not walk in on them, but heard the conversation that mm -hmm. was happening in the garage, but he wasn't in the room. 
And uh, as a result of that, the police were called, the perpetrator was arrested and is in prison. Yeah, and that usually happens less often mm-hmm. than not. And and I've usually got, perpetrators I've got a, keep perpetrating. They keep perpetrating. The thing is, right. I've got an article here about how does this happen? Mm-hmm. You know, you're going, how, my goodness, we're talking literally, if you look at the numbers, um, it's like six or 7,000 victims. I mean, it's a vast number of victims. Um, and the thing is, the greatest curveball about sexual abuse is that most folks completely miss uh, this. In order to be successful at what they do, child molesters have to bend over backwards to be kind, caring, and generous. Not so that's just the, the victims. Fake self. That's mm-hmm. right. Okay. Not just the victims, but everyone within their targeted victims' universe, mm-hmm. because their grand scheme is to draw the child into their web. Right. So you know, child molesters are very patient, especially those in trusted and respected positions. Uh, There's no rush to achieve their goal. They may spend weeks or months working their way into the fabric of the child's life. Mm -hmm. The child's trust, innocence, and inherent lack of experience is totally being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So the molester soon makes physical touching, you know, the stroke of the knee, the rub of the shoulder, the trussle of the hair, a normal part of their relationship with a child. Soon, Mm -hmm. more uh, invasive forms abuse a child, and the fate is sealed. So it's almost like they're priming the situation they're getting the Mm -hmm. child used to it they're associating that touch of the knee with the ice cream cone that they buy them and then of course they're esteeming them and paying attention to them and one of the biggest forms of abuse as we've spoken about is neglect so what they're not doing is they're not neglecting the child and as you remember from one of our episodes and it's written up in my book as well and here it is i just want to show people healing be, be the cause. Exists. Healing it's Human there. Disconnect. Yes, available on Amazon. Kindle and... Um, Paperback f- form. Version. Okay, so in the book I talk about the uh, case where a young woman would rather put her hand on a hot stove. She was one of our guests on the show, uh, rather than be neglected. So you can see the extent to which children want to avoid neglect and predators prey on the idea that there's no father around, mother's tired, she's working, maybe she has six, eight other children. And so that that child will do just about anything for attention. So what a painful choice for a child to then be uh, rejected and neglected, okay, and 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 ha- have to do sexual favors. So uh, there's yeah. a there's a follow-up movie I actually saw today that was uh, done by PBS and Frontline. It's about an hour and a half movie. It's called Secrets of the Vatican, and um, it goes over mother, more issues. Um, money. The Vatican Bank has had issues. Uh, rumor has it they may have even um, taken some of the money from the Nazis during the Holocaust. Wow. Um, okay. And uh, there's a lot of there's the gay mafia in Rome as well. Other guy priests in Rome. But one of the things is Ber- Pope Bern- Pope Bernadette Bernadette. Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah, Bernadette uh, the the uh, 14th. He was very he was a very big scholar and was taken in charge of a lot of these abuse cases that was in the church. Mm-hmm. Then he became pope. He was kind of the heir apparent, and That's he's it. the guy that resigned. In the first time in 600 years, a pope had resigned. And part of the reason a lot of people believe, and there's good substantiation for it, that he just could not handle this child abuse issue and other issues that are going on in the Vatican. And he just had to step down. He couldn't do it anymore. But see, now we're going to start connecting the dots because this is a huge undercover denial system. And so what happens, whether it be the Catholic Church or the family of origin, is that these subjects become taboo. Yes. And they go underground. Yes. And everyone wants to collude with silence. Or or and they're too embarrassed or they can't believe it happened they, or they want they don't want to relive it. I mean because the statute of limitations it. in most states is not very long. Right. Um, and that's one of the reasons why they were able to get away with it because air too long, it's like too late, you know, you can't do anything about it. Right. Uh, several states have improved it. California led the way in 2003, followed by Delaware, Hawaii, and Minnesota, giving a person until his 48th birthday to sue recourse. Okay, and there are so, other states following. So I want to get into this subject of what's taboo. What is taboo is speaking against cause, speaking against anything that anyone that represents father, 
Holy Ghost, church, religion, mother, okay? We can't bite the hand that feeds us. That's how we were raised. So if within our family of origin, we're getting neglected, we're getting abused or even raped, uh, it's a rare child that will stand up for him or herself and say, hey, you know, emperor has no clothes here, uh, literally, okay? And uh, I'm, call I'm calling it. This is just out of control. This is out of order. Because your favorite line, go ahead. Go ahead, Walt. Childhood really <laughs> is a very hostage situation. Right. Because childhood is a hostage situation, children are silenced they are and they're silenced because what are they going to say well the perpetrators take advantage of that which is a continuation of the article right. they're counting on the fact that they're not going to say anything Absolutely. they may even encourage them say you know don't or you're you know you're going to get in trouble in some respects right but um it just is perpetuated Right, and this is multi-generational, yes. and I, I don't want to give away too much of the movie, but you find out that there's a theme running through the movie where you find out that the perpetrators, and this is very common, I see this very in common. therapy yes. all the time, the perpetrators were perpetrated upon. And abused themselves. Okay, so this goes on and mm -hmm. on, and, uh, and, and and unless people bother to heal and break the multi-generational transmission process. We call it the WTF or the what the Freud, the repetition pattern of abuse, neglect. Um, I talk a lot in the book about uh, acts of omission and acts of commission. Mm -hmm. And I think both are going on here. There's an act of omission in that nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to face it like that Pope Benedictine. I, I he, he ultimately he did not want to deal with it. He couldn't. He didn't have the the chutzpah and the strength to. He, he was did more not. of a he was more of a scholar than right. he was a leader. And it became out that he and and he was encouraged to step down due to all the challenges in the in the Vatican. Now the the current Pope has done a much, much Pope Francis. I'm gonna touch that in a moment. Has done a much better job mm -hmm. in defrocking, which is which is basically they decommission and they fire uh, priests and because, defrauding I'll add mm -hmm, okay defrauding. defrauding the fraud but before I get to that I want to say two things one if you if you've seen the movie or have a comment on it or been abused mm -hmm. or know someone who has we'd love to hear from you to get yes. on the couch with Dr. Judy with your emotional ouch and seriously if you have been uh, in any of these institutions mm -hmm. whether they be church or cult or any institution School. and you have been abused you don't have to use your name oh, you can of call not. in yeah. and uh and get on the couch and we can talk about this. Um, I, I've had patients who have been abused by institutions and I think age matters. Age matters, trauma matters, because if a child has been ne neglected, abused, beaten, then um, and then on top of it all goes to their priest or whoever the person is for consultation consolation uh role modeling and that person fails them also that's a double whammy yeah, isn't it's, it's it just okay so on the richter scale of things it's, if it caused meaning if your parents injured you and then you have such a huge trigger the world becomes a very very unsafe paranoid place the hole in the soul is laid down the hole in the soul is activated and so then People defend the hole in the soul by using uh, like, uh, drugs, turn to drugs and so on. Uh, 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 okay? and, other, and other things, correct, and which if, is included in the movie as right, well. Right, or suicide, mm -hmm. okay, or suicide. What I wanted, the second thing is, I really want to touch on, there's an article I found, behavioral changes in children may signal child sexual abuse. Absolutely. And I thought I would just touch on this because 90% of the molestation is done by family members or someone known and trusted. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some tell telltale signs. So I thought I'd touch on those and you can expand on Please. them. And younger children, we're going to have younger children and then later preteens and adolescents. In younger children, and I've got 10, recurring nightmares. Mm -hmm. Eating habits suddenly change. Inexplainable mood swings draws frightening images, plays in sexual ways with toys. And other children? 
It was toys. Okay. You know, they're reenacting it with, mm-hmm. with their, their dolls and their toys and their mm-hmm. stuffed animals. Mm-hmm. Developing a fear of certain people and places. There's a story I read about a girl who was being abused by her uncle, and every time the uncle came over, the, the girl would be on her mother's side, literally clinging to her leg mm-hmm. and not even getting near the uncle, and she couldn't quite figure it out until she did. Mm-hmm. De- uh, mentions a secret shared with o- other an older child or adult, but won't talk about it. Has different names for private parts that she or he thought was thought was taught. So in other words, you know, you teach them one name and you're starting to use a different name. Mm-hmm. R- regresses to a younger behavior, such as, for example, bedwetting. And yeah, lastly, that's a big one. becomes uncharacteristically clingy and anxious. Yeah, I've seen it all in my practice. Mm-hmm. I'm um, trying to think of anything else. Um, children who act out with other children sexually, and then they project that uh, that that feeling onto another child, and mm-hmm. then the other child feels violated as well. I've seen that in my practice. Uh, they act out with toys. Yes, the urination, the and en- en- yeah, enuresis is a very common one. Another common one is if you see that your child is itching and scratching away at her genitals or her anus, it's not a good sign. Okay, so sometimes it is a good idea to check your kids, you know, and, and uh, uh, of course, um, if you find that your child is over-sexualizing and masturbating ferociously at a young age, these are some of the signs that something's going on that, that that's just... Um, a sign of violation because yeah, as i yeah. say symptoms are the hieroglyphics that point to the cause so when we do a little detective work we can follow the dots connect the dots and see that something's off and so we we must read our our, our children's symptoms and take them very seriously they're uh looking at preteens <clears throat> and, young, and young adults uh there was one lady who all of a sudden started wearing very uh, high necklines and long sleeves no matter what the weather was and her friend thought something just wasn't right went into the restroom followed her into the bathroom in school and found out she was cutting on herself yeah that's a really okay. common um, symptom mm-hmm. of, of, of child abuse yes. yes and that's number one on the preteens and adolescents is cutting oneself or otherwise hurting oneself. Mm-hmm. Cha- again, changing in eating habits, excessive dieting or eating, sudden unexplained changes in personality, mood swings, insecure, being withdrawn, outbursts of anger, talks of suicide or suicide attempts, right. depression or anxiety, running away from home, promiscuity, uh, drug or alcohol abuse and unexplained money or gifts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, 50% of the children wait up to five years before disclosing the abuse. And in many instances, I've read, uh, not that I'm an expert, it's longer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, there's just, it, right. they don't want to. I, I had a uh, case, Walt, years ago where the woman came to me because she was married and um, she um, had some startle responses every time her husband touched her and she also had gagging responses so of course it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the gagging responses Mm -hmm. was from fellatio yes okay and the startle response forced fellatio right from somebody else okay because because Mm -hmm. it, it it was now being associated with her husband as a trauma and his touching her back startled her because the sexual experience was something that was involuntary and forced upon her. And so she had all of these projections now uh, onto her husband, projected it into her sexuality. And it was a big mess. And at the time, I had no mind map, but I did a lot of analysis with her. And she literally lay on my couch for probably six months or a year. And we were able to get through it. She wow, would really you. struggle coming in, mm-hmm. but she'd feel better. She'd feel worse and then better. Mm-hmm. And then I got a letter from her, I think a year later, that uh, her marriage was doing great. She had just had a baby. And it was Super. just a really good. positive good letter. You. So with that in mind, we can heal. It takes time. Yes. Um, if you're just tuning in, thank you so much for joining us. You've tuned in to Dr. Judy WTF, which normally stands for What the Freud, but today it's What the Film. 
we are shrinking the movie Spotlight, which is an Academy Award nominee for Best Picture, uh, Best R Screenplay, and a few actors got uh, nominated as well. Um, and it's dealing with the abuse in the Catholic Church that has been going on for decades, and the Boston Globe was the one the story's about that uh, broke the story and um, was able to literally burst the dam mm -hmm. in over 100 cities here in the United States and 100 cities abroad now have uh, awareness and cases and complaints and awards against the perpetrators. Right. One, on the last day of his trip when po Pope Francis was here last year, he finally met with some of the victims uh, of the clergy sexual abuse. In other words, he's finally putting it out in the open, admitting it, and attempting to address address it with some of the victims. Yes. Um, God weeps for the sexual abuse of children, Pro Pope Francis said last year mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, after meeting with hundreds of bishops and seminarians. I am overwhelmed by the shame that people who were in charge of caring for these young ones raped them and caused them great damage. And That's for the people quote. who covered up, because that act of omission, yes. the act of omission versus the act of commission. The perpetrators were committing, but the people who covered up were omitting, and both are her hyenas crimes. And, and uh, you can't have, you can't keep committing unless you have a, a panel of omitters, mm -hmm. because that's what kept the system going. And that's the truth of what keeps the family system of abuse going, is these panels of omitters Mothers who don't speak, fathers who don't speak, uncles who do not report, and that's the tragedy, and that's, that's what keeps it a closed system because people are afraid to break open taboo subjects, speak against their parents, speak against their leaders, their priests, and then it just um, infiltrates and grows and becomes viral, goes viral, as it did spread throughout it the did. globe. It, it went viral really quick yeah. once this came out. Yeah. And the Cardinal of Boston, uh, Cardinal Law, uh, resigned mm -hmm. and almost really did break the church in Boston. I mean, it, I mean, there were uh, 13 that they thought, and, and, and you've watched the movie, it's a bigger number. And, and wasn't it sinister to see, I don't really want to give away too much of the movie, but obviously everyone wore these huge crosses, and <laughs> Walt and I one, looked one at of each the, other. One, one character in the movie did wear this gigantic cross. Gigantic cross, and yes. I, I kept saying to Walt, see, the bigger the cross on these people, the more they're, they're hiding. So it was when a I, calm, And my question like a, was, what, it, what, inverse, it, um, what is he what, compensating for? That's it. Yeah. Right. Right. And it becomes so sinister when you're cloaked in um, this this uh, uh, well a, a role of 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 being godlike, and then underneath it all is all this 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 darkness. Very much so. And that's what makes it and, so and, sinister. And it was really interesting. Is I don't, I'm not taking too much away from the movie. Many more than once they would come. Well, yeah, we understand that this is an issue and this is a challenge. But mm -hmm. look what good the church is doing. You know, look at the bigger picture. Right. Well. For crying out loud, that might be the case, but you know what? That still doesn't take one thing away Correct. from what is being done and has been done and the carnage of all those people that have been in, uh, impacted and their the lives changed. And the only way any institution can do good in a big picture way is if people are willing to self-reflect and self-correct and yes. own their own stuff. So anytime they're trying to hide the truth because in a big picture way, so much good is going on, that in itself will implode the system, as it did. Yeah, it because somebody's going to uncover this stuff, expose the lie, and down goes the entire, almost the entire Catholic Church. Well, it was, it was a small percentage. Some feel two, others say it's as high as 6% of all the, the priests that were uh, perpetrators in this. Um, 6% is a gigantic number if you look at how many Wasn't priests and churches Wasn't it 900 people or 800 and some odd people that were involved? 
wasn't that the in number? In Boston, or are you talking about overall? I, I forgot if that was the number in Boston or if that was worldwide. No, in, in world, sure. worldwide, it was a much bigger number. It was a much bigger yeah, number. But I think just number. in that area, I think there were 800 or 900 Yeah, and there, there were some involved. that got, they got to, went to prison because of it. Right. There, are, I thought I would touch on, just we were talking in the Catholic Church, and there's five myths I found an article about the Catholic Church and the scandal. Because it's really, the church has been phenomenally notorious for decades of hiding it, but they're not the only ones. And a lot of people thought a lot of people would leave the church, but they're still lo- loving and loyal, uh, the parishioners that, that go there. First is uh, Pope Benedict is the primary culprit of the cover-up of the abuse. Well, that's not the case, because between 81 and 2005, as I said, the current po- pope, uh, his, the, su- the subsequent pope, the previous pope, um, was the one that really had a lot to do with it and kept it in-house. Mm-hmm. It went all the way to the top. Mm-hmm. Um, nonetheless, it was just one case that uh, his tenure as bishop, it was in Munich where someone was, um, he kind of protected them. So, I mean, that alone, he was kind of a perpetrator. It was interesting, he actually made it to, uh, to Pope at, mm-hmm. even at that because it was mm-hmm. so well hidden. Second is gay priests are to blame. Um, because more than 80% of the victims were male, but uh, that's not really the case. There are numerous flaws in this argument. You know, men, gay men are no more likely to molest children than straight men. Right. And celibacy doesn't seem to have any uh, effect either, okay? Right, just because um, you're gay, it doesn't mean you're, no, you're more prone to molest. Not it, it just uh, has nothing to do with that. No. Third is sexual abuse is more pervasive in the Catholic Church than other institutions. We've touched on that. Not really. I mean, there's, there's huge numbers of the U.S. schools, the Boy Scouts, for example. I mean, it's pervasive in many institutions where, you know, there are children and there's trust involved. Mm-hmm. Um, the t- trick is, though, the Catholic Church is so tightly organized and keeps such meticulous records, many of which have come to light voluntarily or through court orders, um, so they were able to keep a lid on it for a lot longer mm-hmm. just because of how they operate. Mm-hmm. Me- fourth, media outlets are biased against the Catholic Church. Uh, well, it's a big target. I mean, there's 1.1 billion Catholics in the world. So, you know, it's an institution to be reckoned with. And, you know, it's very big and, you know, it's, it's huge. But there are obviously others. Last, the crisis will compel unite U.S. Catholics to leave the church. And as I intimated, not the case. Catholics tend to love their local parishes and priests. And, you know, those that left the church, the abuse crisis ranked low on their reasons for leaving. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an issue. Um, but again, it, it, it's a very small few that really did impact a lot and had a big impact on the church. But um, overall, it, uh, it didn't really do a lot to, to damage it. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is about the Catholic Church um, is that uh, the Boston Globe was really the one that, that broke the dam on it and resulted in the convictions and sentencing of several people that, uh, in Boston specifically. Um, and they even got a Pul- Pulitzer Prize for it. Uh, the alleged cover-up, no, there was one father that uh, shamelessly advocated the, I love this title of this group, North American Man-Boy Love Association. Under questioning, the cardinal states that when the priest committed sexual crimes, the cardinal said his practice was to seek the analysis of a psychiatrist and clinician and therapists in residential treatment before dealing deciding whether the priest accused of anything. So they, so they, they tried denied to, it. They, they denied it. the kid and then, was at fault. Yeah, and they would blame the kid and the right. priest as opposed to just saying, okay, you're done. No, they danced around it a lot. And um, this mm-hmm. other movie I saw, there was a lot of talk, a lot of promises, a lot of listening, and very little, if any, action. And, and you know, that's another way that predators get kids. Children always think it's their fault. Um, yes, yes. We talked a lot about Alice Miller's book, um, Prisoners of Childhood, uh, Drama of the Gifted Child. And in her book, she states that a child would rather be a bad child in a good world rather than a good child in a bad world. And that's because the child doesn't want to feel that he or she is in danger. So she would rather take on the, um, the, the role of being bad or dirty. Well, he did that to me because I flirted with him, or he did that to me because uh, I was promiscuous, or I'm at, so, so where the child always puts the blame and the shame and the guilt is on him or herself. So it's really easy for adults to say, well, 
little Johnny, little Mary, of course he molested you. You know, you shouldn't have worn your tight pants or you shouldn't have been uh, smiling so cutely at, 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 at him or her. So it, it turns into that egocentric, childlike point of view. And, and so it's really easy. So fast to flip it's it on. It's really the, easy to, to flip it on, to, the, per, yeah, on the child. Right, exactly. I want to make mention, that was actually mentioned in the movie, and there's one organization that's been very, very instrumental in the Catholic Church to, to help folks, and it's abbreviated SNAP, S-N-A-P. It stands for Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. And you can look it up and Google it if you need to. Mm -hmm. It's SNAP, mm -hmm. Survivor Net, Survivor's Network of Those Abused by Priests. It weighs a long battle and was started uh, in 1988 uh, in helping victims seek legal redress against bishops who concealed sexual predators. Um, so if that, that's a resource, if you want to go uh, and, and, do, some, do and something And I, I just it. wanted to go back to a point about age matters because the younger the child, the more the trauma on the child. Oh, absolutely. And then there are people who get abused at a later age in their later teens. And although it is traumatic and it is abusive, and in some cases it can uh, create a, a real um, um, traumatic event, it's usually the younger children who suffer these extreme uh, reactions to the wound. Because when you're older, you have a voice, you're bigger, you can push them off. But again, if emotionally we're wounded, if emotionally we're underdeveloped, you can be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, being, being molested by a priest, and then that triggers all the childhood trauma. So you have to look at it as the big, big earthquake, the foundation uh, that gets thrown off at the causal level, the family level, and then layer two, the Two is the trigger of the secondary trauma, and if foundationally children are not in good shape, then the secondary trauma will topple them over, just like a secondary earthquake will topple over um, a, a faulty building. And what's what's scary is, as we've alluded to, it sets the stage if it's not addressed or dealt with for when that individual becomes an adult they're probably, they're more likely mm -hmm. to follow and do what they had done to them right. um, in future generations. And that's called identification with the aggressor. Mm -hmm. If you can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. And all of this is very unconscious, so it's not mm -hmm. like that person wakes up and says, well, it was done to me, and so I'm going to do that to somebody else. It just kind of works its way into...